When it comes to the scene manager, I'd say most people dive right in without looking at the events first and end result may stumble around looking for a way to do something when their goal is easily achievable with the scene manager events. Because of this, before we cover all the options of the scene manager, we're just going to go over the events first. The first is on client loaded start scenes. This event indicates that a specific network connection or client has loaded initial scenes. The Boolean value indicates if this callback is occurring on the server or client. Since you can be both as host, this is an important distinction. If we take a quick look at the player spawner example, which spawns a prefab for the player when they connect, you can see that the spawn logic only runs if the event callback occurs as server. And since we are here, I strongly encourage you to not spawn any prefabs for a player or give a player ownership of any objects until this event is called. There are technical reasons for this, but I won't be going over them right now. The next two events are on queue start and on queue end. Anytime you tell the scene manager to modify scenes such as loading or unloading, these instructions are put into a queue. If the queue is just being populated, then on queue start will invoke. Just as when there are no more instructions to run, on queue end will invoke. These two events could be useful for showing scene change progress, such as displaying a loading screen when the queue starts and hiding it when the queue ends. Going down a bit, we have some more events. It looks like the next one is on load start. On load start is invoked when you instruct the scene manager to load a scene. Keep in mind, this is called before the scene manager loads the scene. Details about the load will be contained within the scene load start event args. Let's open that up and take a look. This is a fairly straightforward structure. It only contains queue data, which has information on what scenes to load and how to load them. If I were to open up the load queue data, you will see that there's a bit more in here. There's no reason for you to have to modify anything supplied in this class. It's mostly here as feedback so that you may know more about the scenes being loaded. To save time, I won't be covering most of the fields. As you can see, they are all commented. There is a fair chance though that you'll be using the as server field. When this is true, the scene changes are occurring on the server. When false, they are occurring on the client. Again, keep in mind that pretty much all features in fish networking that use as server will call on both server and client when acting as host. Back in the scene manager, the next event is on load percent change. This event is invoked every time the loading progress updates. Included with the invoke is scene load percent event args. Let me go ahead and open that up. Inside this structure is again the data used to load scenes. Secondly is the percent field. Everything discussed previously about the load queue data holds true here. The percent field indicates total percentage of scene load progress with one float being 100% complete. Note that on occasion you may see this callback occur with 0% then jump straight to 100%. The scene manager in Fish Networking uses Unity's internal scene manager and in sync callbacks to get load percentages. Should you notice this to occur, keep in mind that it's not a bug within Fish Networking but rather that's just the information Unity is giving back. Last of the load events is on load end. This is invoked after scene load instructions have completed. There's also information in regards to the scenes loaded within the scene load end event event args. Since this event occurs after load completes, there's more helpful information within the structure. As with the others, you have queue data. Next is loaded scenes. Naturally, these are the scenes that were just loaded. After that is skipped scene names. This contains a string of scenes which were instructed to be loaded but were not as they likely were already. Next up is the unload events and these are going to be very similar to the loaded events. On unload start is called when a scene begins to unload but always before the unload has progressed. Let's open up the scene unload start event args to see what callback information is available. Like with the scene load, you have queue data. I will peer into this but not talk about it too much. It's near identical to the load queue data variant. So if you familiarize yourself with one or the other, you pretty much know both. In this scene manager again, you have on unload end, which you guessed it, calls after unloading has completed. Jumping into scene unload end event args, you will find the expected queue data, but also unloaded scene handles. The int array contains the scene handle property of scenes which were unloaded. Since the scenes are now unloaded, there's no way to reliably return the scene reference itself, but the handle can still be incredibly useful, such as if you store them using the on load end. The last two events are on client presence change start and end. These events are called when a client is being added to or removed from a scene. When being added, they are only invoked after the client has loaded the scene on their end. When being removed, they are invoked prior to the client receiving the scene update on their side. Both of these events are only called on the server. The main difference between start and end is that start is called before the server updates observers for the client. 
and end after. For example, if you wanted to spawn something for the client in a particular scene they were being added to, or if you wanted to send them a message on an object in that scene, you would use the on client present change end event. This ensures the client is observing all elements in the scene prior to receiving such information. You will notice that both start and end use the same information in the callback. Let's check that out. This is another small structure which has the following information. The scene which a connection is being added or removed from, the connection or client which is being changed, and a boolean indicating if they are being added to or removed from the scene. That concludes the events, but as an honorable mention, we also have scene connections. Scene connections is a collection which contains each network scene and all clients in said scene. The use of this information is fairly versatile and you'll probably end up using it at some point.